Hello mga friendships! For today's vlog, we are going to take you to The Vine. We are going to explore a former Tudor powerhouse turned 17th century family home set in gardens, woodlands, and wetlands. By the way, mga friendships, now that we're getting more freedom to go on holidays and to travel, if you want to stay in luxury hotels or go on luxury cruises and earn at the same time, I have linked in the description area the link to join in cruises. Check it out, mga friendships. It's a good deal and, and I am a member as well and I love it. This is our last day. We're also checking out before we drive to the vine. The vine is um, well. We haven't been to this place, you know, before. This is the first time we're going there. We just found it online, and it seems that they are already opened. The house is not open, but the gardens and the woodlands is already open. So we are going to, um, yeah, just walk, rumble in their woodlands and gardens so what is it come and join us let's see what box. is there to see i thought it's a wishing well it's not a wishing well it's a flower the video So here we go mga friendships, we have arrived at our destination. So this is now the vine. Now let me tell you a brief history of the house at the vine. The vine in Hampshire has been home to lords and ladies for five centuries. Over the years, it's been visited by Tudor kings, been lived in by a speaker of the House of Commons, and sheltered in by Second World War second world war evacuees so the vine near uh, sherbourne st john was transformed from a cluster of medieval uh, buildings really into a tudor palace between 1500s and 1520. this was the work of william sandys who became lord chamberlain to king henry the in 1526. now approximately a third of its original size the vine once extended as far as the lake and was described as one of the principal houses in all of Hampshire. The garden bookshop. It looks like the garden bookshop. So what is in there, Kai? What are you supposed to do? Why is it no book? It's an activity book. What are you supposed to do with it, Cash? Cash. What are you supposed to do with it? You're supposed to write down the answer. This one says which Tudor king visited him about 1545 with his wife Annie Boleyn. Oh, okay. Henry How did you know that? It's written near the end. It's written there? No. Oh my god. <laughs> so maybe you are supposed to read some information. Then you can answer. And then you get a prize at the end? What did the woman said? So mga friendships, this is now the beginning of the garden of the house in the vine. So uh, the garden is a 9 hectare garden which is surrounding the house at the vine. It has been tweaked and altered for over 400 years. There are two lakes, a walled garden, a formal garden, and meadow along with lawns and graham stewart thamas herbaceous border seat neatly inside the area and the walled garden is also dating back to the 18th century the walled garden houses a variety of fruit and vegetables as well as dahlia border an ambitious restoration program restored the glass house and the fruit and vegetable beds as well and the summer house possibly is the earliest domed garden building in England. The summer house dates from around 1635. 
It was variously used as a banqueting house and a dovecote and designed by John Webb and built in the shape of a Greek cross. It is thought to be one of a pair of planned for the gardens. Those big trees, small friendships that you can see are called guinea oak. There are so many or hundreds of them all over the woodlands. They are frail but still standing. The hundred guinea oak is now over 600 years old. William John Shute, who owned the vine in the late Georgian period, was offered a hundred pounds and later a hundred guineas for the timber. He flatly refused to sell the oak, which you can see for yourself at the top of the Lime Avenue. Did you know, mga friendships, that here in the Vine, they have a renewable energy project? So, it is part of the National Trust Renewable Energy Investment Program. So, the Vine has installed a water source heat pump in the lake. This has provided uh, reliable and energy efficient heating to the house and brew house and tea room. Uh, so, there is an array of coils which was installed in the lake to extract the natural heat produced in the water through heat transfer. So underground pipes now bring this heat from the lake through some heat pumps which bring the water temperature up to the suitable temperatures for conservation heating for the collection and comfort heating for the cafes and offices. So um, because of that, the vine has benefited through reduction of the vine's dependence on fossil fuels. Wow, that's really good. Uh, the increase of oxygen production in the lake, which, is, which has a positive impact on biodiversity as a result of heat extraction. And it also upgraded of an aging and costly system. And they also gain the renewable incentive income from the government as well as the reduction of overall energy, energy bills, allowing, to, allowing them for more funds to be allocated to the conservation of work. That is really cool. I like that. So now back to the history of the house, mga friendships. After nearly being made destitute over the course of the English Civil War in the 17th century, the sixth Lord Sandys sold the vine to Shaloner Shute, a barrister and the Speaker of the House of Commons. It was Shaloner Shute who reduced the size of the building and modernized it commissioning John Webb to add the classical portico in 1654, the first of its kind on a privately owned English country house. The Schutt family largely continued to own the vine well into the 20th century. In the 1920s, a girls' boarding school occupied it for a time. During the Second World War, which was 1939 to 1945, Boys from the Tormor School in Deal, Kent, were evacuated here. So, on the death of Sir Charles Shute in 1956, the vine was bequeathed to the National Trust. Over the years, the house and grounds have received thousands of visitors who have enjoyed huh? walking along the lakeside and into okay. nearby Morgaston wood here in the vine they are they also have the wetlands so the wetlands were formed in early 21st century from the remains of a water meadow water meadows were commonly used between the 17th century 
to the early 20th century to improve the growth of grass by the water, raising the temperature above the air temperature and supplying additional nutrients. So water flowed continuously over the sward of the grass without completely covering it. And also the wildlife at the vine. So the vine estate has a variety of habitats from deciduous woodlands, wetlands, and a large ornamental lake. All those areas are homes to various species of birds. During the year, you can expect to see anything from waders, birds of prey, owls, swans, game birds, and herons. A pair of binoculars is a must, especially when visiting the bird hide which looks over the wetlands area. Mga friendships, we are actually under the uh, blossom tree but um it has without you know flowers yet because we were there around um february i think this was must be february or march so um yes and this is the orchard area orchards are great for wildlife wildflowers are often grown underneath the trees to attract pollinators in spring and this vlog is very timely because did you know mga friendships that the, uh, the 20th of may is the world bee day so yes the fruit that grows from blossom provides a feast for song thrushes and blackbirds so which also hunt for insects among the blossom even badgers eat the fruit that falls to the ground blossom trees are also a vital source of pollen for bees and other wildlife during spring so yes mga friendship today is world bee day so happy world bee day everyone have a nice weekend bye